Welcome back everybody, Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. We have another proof to do dealing with the dot product and this one is pretty tricky, I must say. So we have to prove that uh, vector a dot vector d is equal to zero if vector c is equal to b dot a times vector a, vector b is equal to c plus vector d, and vector a is a unit vector. So we got to prove this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to work with that left side. So we got a dot vector d, and we have to prove that that's going to equal zero somehow. So notice that vector d, we can isolate with this equation here. So we can say that vector b minus vector c is equal to vector d. So we can say that this is equal to a dot in brackets vector b minus vector c. This is just vector d there. So then we can distribute in the brackets so we'd end up with a dot vector b minus a dot vector c. And we know that vector c is equal to this here, this expression. So we'd have a dot vector b minus a dot, and then in brackets, we got the dot product between a and b times vector a, like that. So I want to talk about this here. And notice that the dot product between two vectors, that's just a scalar. So we basically have a scalar, some kind of number, multiplied by vector a, and then we're taking the dot product of that vector in brackets with vector a again. So if we put a scalar here, so this would be like, uh, let's say, a dot, and let's put some kind of scalar, maybe three. This is basically the same as this. So instead of putting b dot a, I just put a scalar 3. So remember the dot product is just some kind of scalar. Well, with uh, using dot product rules, what we can do is we could take the 3 out and just rewrite this as a dot a, like that. Same thing. So we could take that scalar, we could put it in front, and then we can just take the dot product between those two vectors there. That's a rule. So same thing here, I'm going to take this scalar and I'm going to put it in front. So I got a dot uh, b minus, I'm going to put this scalar in front. Instead of writing b dot a, I'm just going to write a dot b. It's the same thing. So that there is a scalar, that's like this 3 here. And then we end up with a dot vector a, like that. Now, a dot vector a, we can rewrite that as um, the magnitude of a squared. And we know that the magnitude of a is what? It's 1, because we're told that a is a unit vector. So this would just be 1 squared. So we could sort of like get rid of that. And now notice that we have a dot b minus a dot b. And that's just equal to zero. So we prove that a dot d is equal to zero. So fairly tough proof in my opinion because there's a lot of substitutions going on and what's tough is realizing that this bracket here b dot a is a scalar and that you could put it in front and then not only that you could switch up the a and b vector. So just remember your uh, dot product rules that uh, if you've got the dot product of a vector with another vector times a scalar, you could bring the scalar in front and then just take the dot product of those two vectors. I think the rule is like um, if you got a dot uh, k vector b, well, that's the same as k times a dot b. All right, but in this case, the uh, a and b, they were the same vector, and then we just brought that 3 in front. So that was pretty tricky, and then a dot a, that is just the magnitude of a squared, and then that's just going to be 1 because a is a unit vector, and then we're just left with a dot b minus a dot b, which is equal to 0.